In this video, we are going to implement user impersonation with a Spring Boot app using Spring Security. Before diving in, let me just explain what is user impersonation and why would we want to implement that. User impersonation in a backend context refers to a feature or capability that allows one user, typically an administrator or a support engineer, to assume the identity and permissions of another user within the system. This is often used for troubleshooting, providing support, or managing user accounts without needing to know the user's password or log in as them directly. Of course, if you clicked on this video, I will assume you already have some knowledge on Spring Boot and Spring Security, and that you most likely already have an authentication implemented. For that reason, I'm also not going to start from scratch, and instead I'm going to use this starter kit that I developed. That is open source, by the way, and you can use it yourself if you want to. This will give us a starting point where we already have an ability to log in as an admin user, and we will also be able to create other users so we can focus on what the purpose of this video is, user impersonation. So I will just go over here and clone this starter kit. Then I will follow the instructions in the readme. So first let's run docker compose up dash D. Then inside the front end directory, let's run npm install and npm run dev. And while that is compiling, let's start our backend as well. If we go to the application.properties file here, we will see that we have defined credentials for the admin user. So this user will be created for us. Now let's try to open this application up and try to log in with this admin user. Okay, cool, that's all working. So what we want to do now is here on this admin users page, we want to have a button in a new column that will allow the admin to impersonate the user. But we will come to that in a second. Let's first start by implementing this functionality on the backend. Let me start by pointing out that if you would go to a Spring Security documentation and you try to search for user impersonation, you will see they don't have anything in their docs that would explain how you can implement that. But if you go to Google and type in user impersonation Spring Security, you should see this link in the results. And if we open that up, you'll see that it's just one class and it does actually come from Spring Security. It's just that they don't have it documented on their official docs. Anyway, this is the exact class that we're going to use. So let's see how to do it. Here in our backend code, you'll see that we have this security configuration class. We'll define this switch user filter being inside this class. I'll just copy the code over so I don't have to type this out. Essentially what we're doing here is just exposing this filter as a bean and Spring Security will know how to use it to handle user impersonation. Let's go over these properties that we're setting. We need to let this filter know how it's going to find the user. And for that reason, we're setting this user detail service. We can dig a bit into the source code here and we'll see that this filter will expect a username parameter from the request and then it will use the provided user detail service to try to find a user based on this username that it received. Then we have this switch user matcher it defines the endpoint path and the method that we want to use as our switch endpoint. We could also use a switch user URL method instead, but it's basically the same thing under the hood. Only difference here is that we specifically want to use the get method while switch user URL would use the post method. I wanted to use the get method because it's going to be easier to implement on the front end. We'll just append username as query parameter. Then we also have the same thing, but for the exit endpoint. So this is the endpoint we want to invoke when we want to go back to our original user. And finally, we're defining this success handler, which is just going to redirect us back to some page on the front end that we're going to implement. Now, the only remaining thing to do on the back end is to restrict the access to these endpoints that we just defined so that they can only be accessed by admin users. So up here in the same class, we're just going to add the matchers and guards for these two endpoints. The previous administrator role is the role that will be added to the authentication context once the switch is successful. This will be done by Spring Security. We don't have to do anything. You'll see how this will help us when we start implementing the front end. And on that note, let's see what we need to do on the front end to make this work. First, let me quickly show you what we have right now and let's go over what we need to add. So we have this users page that we looked at earlier. And here in this table, we will want to add a button that will redirect us to that switch user endpoint that we defined. The redirect will also include user's email address as query parameter. That's all we have to do on this page. 
we also need to implement that switch success page that we define on the back end. That's the page where we will be redirected to when the switch was successful. And lastly, we want to have the ability to go back to the previous user, meaning exit the switch. So we will add the button for that in the header, which is going to be this component here. So let's start with that. I'll just copy the code so I don't have to type this. So what we're doing here is we're checking if the user has this previous administrator authority and if that's the case, it means that this user is being impersonated. So in that case, we want to show this button so the impersonator can switch back to the original account. And you can see this is just a link that will go to that exit switch endpoint, which will in turn redirect us to the switch success URL. Let's now implement this page as well. I'll just create this file here in root layout. And I'm going to paste the code. What we're showing on this page is just a message that the switch was successful and who the current user is. But note that we also have the exit switch button down here as well. Now let's also implement the changes in that users table. So we're going to add this new impersonate column, which will be a link to the switch endpoint. And that's it. We can now go ahead and test this. I'll just save the changes here and we'll open localhost 8080 in the browser. Then I'll log in as admin user and go to the users page. Now, if I click any of these buttons, let's see what happens. We are now impersonating this user. And you can see here that we are indeed now acting as this user because we can no longer see that admin page because this user is not admin. So let's see what happens when I click this exit button. We're redirected to the same page again, but now we're back to our initial account. We can now go to users page again and try that one more time. Yep, we have successfully implemented user impersonation. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing if you would like to see more content like this. Until next time.